Welcome to the Awakened Goddess Show, your source for inspiration, wisdom, and personal discovery. The place to learn from a diverse mix of mentors, metaphysical experts, spiritual leaders, and best-selling authors from around the world. I'm Angela Wilkinson, attraction coach and founder of The Goddess Next Door. Join me as I explore the minds of my masterful guests while they share powerful insights and easy-to-use tools you can start using right away. Now, let's tap into the energy of the Awakened Goddess and be enlightened by today's guest. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Angela Wilkinson, and welcome to this episode of the Awakened Goddess Show, the place for practical spirituality for daily living. Denise Duffield Thomas is the money mindset mentor for the new wave of online female entrepreneurs. Her best-selling books, Lucky Bitch and Get Rich Lucky Bitch, give a fresh and funny roadmap to create an outrageously successful life and business. Denise helps women release their fears of money, set premium prices for their services, and take back control over their finances. Denise is an award-winning speaker, author, and entrepreneur who helps women transform their economy class money mindset into a first-class life. You can find her at luckybitch.com. But before I talk to Miss Denise today, let's talk about the new year that's right around the corner. You know, it's almost 2015, and I'm wondering, how would you like to stop struggling to make ends meet? How about end your confusion about what's your next step? Or maybe stop the cycle of dead-end relationships? How would you like to replace all that with more success, love, and happiness on your terms? Maybe in the past you've tried to make changes and you just ended up with a bigger headache, more confusion, and you found yourself stuck watching old reruns of Sex in the City and stuffing holiday cookies in your mouth. How about this year you do something different? Are you ready to do what it takes to have exactly what you want rather than continuing to settle for a mediocre life? If so, join me for my powerful Sparked program that'll walk you through five weeks of my Spark system to manifest everything your heart desires. Registration closes soon, so grab your spot and let me walk you step by step into your amazing new life. Go to thegoddessnextdoor.com forward slash sparked for all the details. Thanks for listening. Well, welcome, Denise, to the show. I'm so thrilled to have you talking with me today about Money Mindset for the Awakened Goddess. So welcome. Yay. Thank you so much, Angela. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I'm excited because we're going to talk about how to connect with your money power and release those money blocks. And, you know, really, this is a fantastic topic because no matter where we are financially, at some point, we find ourselves facing those money limitations, don't we? You know what? It's interesting. It's it's at all levels of business. You know, I would have thought that at some point that goes away, but it's actually just the business of being in business. You know, multimillionaires still come across their money stuff sometimes. So it's completely normal to have money blocks. I just want to get that out of the way right yeah. at the beginning. <laughs> well, and that's one thing I really appreciate about you is that – you know, I've been following you for a while and I know we went to B school together and, and I saw, I've really watched your journey. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about you is your transparency about when you come up against your own money, money blocks. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And I think that's really important for all of us who are doing any kind of transformation work with people is, you know, perfection isn't the goal. And I see this so much in the world at the moment, you know, with, I was thinking about this with Lena Dunham, you know, the thing that, that really polarizes people about, about her is she's so transparent and so willing to show her imperfections, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's just one person in kind of more of a, a Hollywood kind of sense, but I think it's really filtering down into the entrepreneurial world as well, that people just want to see transparency because they want to know that they're not alone mm-hmm. and they're not looking for us as leaders to be perfect. They want to see the behind the scenes stuff and they want to see the humanity. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's definitely makes us more relatable for certain. Yeah. And, for sure. Uh, yeah. I think it speaks also to the shift kind of to more of the feminine way of doing business. Um, 
yeah, showing that other side. So I'm curious, do you find that there are particular money blocks that show up for women? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> There's some really, really common ones. But um, with, with your people, would you say that a lot of them are kind of beginners or more established entrepreneurs? Because they are slightly different, but same in, in some ways. Yeah, a little bit more established, I would say. Okay, great. So I would say that something that happens with established business owners is once they start, you know, they've gotten over the hump of charging because that's a big money block at the beginning. It's like, oh my God, I'm not allowed to charge for this. Mm -hmm. And then I see the next thing that comes up is it's inappropriate for me to make a lot of money yeah. helping people. And I use the word inappropriate because that's kind of how it feels. Mm -hmm. It feels like, oh, this is a bit icky that I'm allowed to do what I want to do. I'm allowed to have freedom and a bit of abundance. And I'm allowed to create a, a life for myself doing what I like. But what about all the other people in the world who can't do that? Or what about my clients who really need me and, and can't afford me? And that's where I think people get a bit stuck when they start to think, okay, I'm burnt out. I'm, I've taken on as many clients as I can or as many um, people as I can work with energy wise. And I think for your audience too, you, you know, I think guys listening, you know, when that happens to you, when you start to feel too full mm -hmm. and for some people that's 10 clients a week and some people that's a hundred clients a week. So it's, it's so personal and you just feel like, okay, this is real. This is, this is as much as I can ever charge. This is as much as I can ever do in my business. And it feels really hard to break through that. And what um, what's interesting about this blog is that it will come up again and again in different points of your business, whatever you feel like is a symbolic income for you. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's the income that they um, used to earn in a job. You know, you hit that and you think, well, I can't go beyond that because I hated that job yeah. and I love what I do. So hang on, this doesn't feel right energetically. Right. So does that make, does that make sense where that kind of hits hits people. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely can see. It's kind of like that um that glass ceiling. Especially for women, I think that there's that that value um that struggle with self-worth and self-value and and definitely I can see how that would come up depending on where they are in their own transformational process, healing and, and growth to that really determines where that level is. Totally. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting you said the glass ceiling because I was saying recently, you know, the wage gap, yeah. which is talked about all the time, that's real in the entrepreneurial world as well. And guess what? We have nobody to blame for that, <laughs> yeah. you know, because we set our own prices. We, we set our own income goals, but that glass ceiling can feel incredibly real, mm -hmm. even though we have no boss <laughs> except ourselves. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing what happens when our ego gets involved and, and all of our stuff comes up and it just shows up. I think business and relationships are the two um, areas that you're going to find most of your, all of your stuff just showing up in full color. <laughs> and weight and, you know, yeah. and your weight. <laughs> they will, honestly, some people say sometimes when they do my money boot camp, they go, oh, I'd really like to apply, you know, the principles of manifesting to my love life and my weight. And I say, great, go through the boot camp again and just pretend that I say weight instead yes. of money because it's the exact same stuff. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, you know, the emotional eating that we do, my goodness, when we clear out that other stuff, that sometimes just naturally – um, decreases. So <laughs> it does. And if we can just segue into another parallel around that mm -hmm. is around, um, being comfortable with excess. Mm. And this comes up a lot with, with women, right? If they've been in debt or yeah. they're hitting that glass ceiling, you know, just say their glass ceiling, um, which I call the energetic income level is 50,000 mm -hmm. and they hit against that. And for some reason they've pushed through and they've managed to make 70,000. Well, some people will find any way energetically they'll manifest it, whatever, a way to get rid of that, that, you know, extra 20,000 Yeah, because it's just not comfortable for them. And then I said to my boot campers the other day, if anyone has a problem with having excess money, you know, like you feel uncomfortable having it in your bank account or whatever, cause it feels wasteful almost. I want you to, over the next couple of days, when you have dinner, 
leave a bit of food on your plate and mm. see how that feels. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it brought up so much stuff. For people. <laughs> they were like, well, that's wasteful. And like, well, I was, you know, obviously being greedy in the first place for even putting extra food on my plate mm. and all this stuff came up for them. And I just thought, oh my God, it, our stuff is just our stuff. Yeah. Well, so that brings up another question is how do we become powerful around money, but without being greedy or unethical? Oh yeah. The unethical thing is so interesting. I think your audience especially Mm -hmm. will do this. So one of, one of the things is to understand, um, some of the stories you're telling yourself around money. And so one of them could be, I just want to help people. You know, I don't care about money. I just want to help people. So if you find yourself saying things like that, honestly, the most powerful thing you can do is just be aware of what you're saying, Mm -hmm. you know, aware of the words that you're putting out into the universe, aware of, um, what information you are telling yourself again and again. So words matter. Words are incredibly powerful. Um, so it could be that, you know, I just want to help people. And here's another one that women say too, is things like, um, you know, well, I just, I, my family are more important than money, you know, or my Mm. kids are more important than money. And it's like, well, of course they are, you know, that's just a given. So the very, very first step, Angela, that I want everyone to do is just to be aware of what you're saying out loud Mm -hmm. around money. Yeah. Um, and catch yourself in the moment because sometimes just changing your language can change things in the real, in the real world around how you act and feel around money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what other ways have you found to be like the most successful or effective ways to release those money blocks? Cause I know I remember reading, um, get rich, lucky bitch. And one of the things I remembered reading is that you'd said, you know, just throw everything at it, do everything. You were trying every which away to, yeah. uh, you know, transform these money blocks. So I'm wondering what you found to be the most effective to release them. Well, again, I don't think there is one. I really like to have a toolkit and I'll mm-hmm. tell you some of the things that I use. And if people listening think, well, that didn't work for me. Well, it's like, great, find the next thing or try it again or whatever. I really love emotional freedom technique. Mm-hmm. I think that's brilliant for for clearing all sorts of blocks, money, um, you know, relationship wise, whatever it's, it's brilliant. So anyone who doesn't know, it's a tapping modality. You tap on different points of your body and it really helps you to shift energy. I also like, um, going and seeing professionals like kinesiologists. Mm, Yeah. And I think, yeah, I mean, that's just brilliant, right? Or any kind of healing or energy modality. I think, I think they all work. Um, in different ways. And so I think, you know, you just have to find one that resonates most with you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love the the practice of forgiveness. Mm, yeah. That is incredibly powerful. And so it could be that you just, I mean, the very, one of the very first exercises I get my boot campers to do is to go through all their money memories and, and do some forgiveness work. And so whenever anyone comes and says, ah, oh, I'm struggling with this, it's like, Forgive and tap. Forgive and tap. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that, uh, you know, a lot of the things with the spiritual work is it's all in the intention. Even if you don't know how to do something correctly or, you know, you can just set the intention and do it. And, you know, usually that will get you through. So I'm so glad you said that because a few people have asked me too, why do you think EFT works? And I've said, honestly, it could be a placebo. Yeah. I have no idea really how a lot of these things work. Mm-hmm. And maybe in the future when we're much more enlightened than we are now, we will look back and go, I can't believe, you know, <laughs> they they stood on one foot and they rubbed their tummy yeah. and they tapped their thing and they didn't need to. It was, you know, it's the ruby shoes. The power is always within you to do it. Mm-hmm. Except as humans, sometimes we just need to have the ritual and the yeah. intention, and that is powerful in itself. In the future, we will just think of things, and they'll just—I'm sure they'll just manifest, you know, instantly without us having to do stuff. But how we are right now, sometimes those things do work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very cool. So, I'm curious, what was the turning point for you in your business when you made the shift from doing what kind of the industry, the coaching industry? 
was doing versus what you wanted and what you were feeling inspired and called to do and really trusting that it was going to sustain you and work? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, the, the first couple hundred dollars I made in my business felt amazing. Mm -hmm. And I, I always started that with the intention of this is going to be my future. I'm going to, you know, have a business that not only sustains me, but sustains my family and creates that freedom, adventure and abundance that I want. And so I think, um, you do have to start as if it's going to be successful. So mm. this is for people who are starting out and you think, oh, when is this going to happen? Right. <laughs> it will happen. <laughs> it will happen, but you do have to have the consistency and the courage and the persistence to keep that going. Yeah. So I knew rather than going, oh, I only made $225 in my business, I was like, this is the start. Um, and then I think two months later, I, I, run, I ran an event, my very first event, and it was $97. It was an um, event in my town, and it was at this really crappy club, like a bowling club. <laughs> yeah. I, you guys probably don't have them in Australia. It's like a lawn bowls. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like this game that old people play no. <laughs> and it's out, outside. But they have these clubs, right, and they have very cheap room hire. So I had my event there, and I think I had 25 women there for $97. And after that event, I went to the fanciest restaurant in town and I was looking at the menu and I was like, okay, I can afford a glass of champagne and I can afford, I was looking at, <laughs> I was looking at the menu. You're looking at your and choices. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, what could I afford? And it was, it was like Canadian dish. It's like poutine or something. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Canadians, you're going to be laughing. But it, it's like poutine or poutine or something like that. And I had no idea what it was, but it was the thing that I could afford. Oh. And <laughs> so I ordered it and it was this weird potato kind of thing. Sorry, Canadians. <laughs> and um, But I sat there and I said, universe, more of this, please. Mm -hmm. More clients, more success, more money, more more people to help. Um, this feeling of, you know, spending a whole day with people and transforming their lives, this is what I want. And I, I anchored that feeling down in the ground. Mm. And, you know, a few years before I'd done the same thing. I'd been on honeymoon and, you yeah. know, I had this, we were in beautiful Bali and it was really warm. And I anchored that experience down in the ground and I said, universe, this is what I want more of, freedom, adventure and abundance. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's those moments where, you just have to like put a pin down in it, you know, like on your iPhone when you put a pin down on the map and just go, this is a moment that I want to pin down energetically and show the universe this is what I want more of and declare it. Mm -hmm. So for me that that was a turning point, but it was a series of little turning points like that, knowing that every action that I that I did towards my business was leading towards that that overall desire of having a life of freedom, adventure, and abundance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's those little shifts that, that change the trajectory of your experience. It sounds like. Yes. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hmm. Did you ever have that dish again? Mm -mm. <laughs> I've never had it again. <laughs> yeah. Poutine. <laughs> pronouncing it completely incorrectly as well. Oh gosh. So, you know, there's a saying out there that when you have more money, you have larger money problems. I'm curious what's your experience been in, in as you've been growing and you're expanding your, your, um, abundance. What, what are you seeing with that whole theory, more money and more larger or larger money problems? What a great question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, it's so great that you, you asked that because I've actually got this thing in front of me and it's something that Kendall Summerhawk gave me a couple of years ago who was one of my coaches and it was kind of the five stages of business and the practical things you have to do mm -hmm. in each level of business. So, for example, like, you know, level one was, um, you know, get your first PayPal account and stuff like that. And then level two is things like create your giveaways and maybe set up a merchant account. Level three is like set up a business account. Level four would be things like setting up business protection and trademarks. Level five is things like maybe to sell your business. 
And on the back of that, I wrote down all the mindset stuff that happens at that time. Mm -hmm. And so even though, you know, that might be a belief that people have that the more money I make, the more problems I have, that's just a belief, you know, and that's definitely a belief that I think um, people need to look at that could be stopping them from going to the next income level. And that's why Mm. I always say look at the income level that you suck at and see if it is symbolic. A symbolic one might be um, switching to a new tax bracket, Oh, yeah. You know, and so you might not even be aware of of that. You know, it might not even be in your conscious um, awareness that you think, oh, God, if I earn just a little bit over that, I go into a new tax bracket. Um, in the UK and Australia, we have to charge sales tax, and I think in some states you guys do mm-hmm, as well. Mm-hmm. And so I've seen women at, at, at the threshold – start to hold themselves back because they're like, oh, God, if I earn over this, I'm going to have to do more reporting and do all that kind of stuff. So I would say at every level there's always something that's scary until it's not. Yeah, that's true. You know, and so at that first level, setting up a PayPal account when you're first starting out, (laughs) it feels so scary. Yeah. (laughs) And then it's not. Yeah, that's true. You know, and so the thing that happened for me this year, I was like, wow, you know, I was looking at my my thing and I was like, oh, I'm in level four now. I have to start doing some of that legal stuff. And that felt scary. Mm -hmm. And I had to contact a lawyer and say, you know, I need to sort out some terms and conditions and privacy policy and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And that was really scary. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't. Yeah. You know, so you're never going to have to, um, you know, organize, sort out level four problems when you're in level one. Sure. You only just do that next thing and it'll be scary and then it won't be. So I wouldn't say that having creating more having more money has created more problems. It's just different mindset shifts to get through and different kind of, I guess, scary little hurdles mm-hmm. to to go over. But it's just where you're at at that time and, yeah. and you can deal with it. So, yeah, that's yeah. a great question though. Yeah. And I think people, you know, it's really powerful if you sit and, and write down a list of all the things you're scared about about having more money. Yeah, definitely. Well, and I think that it's so fascinating that the way we sabotage ourselves can be the wildest things. You know, we can manifest our car breaking down or clients just disappearing and and deciding that they no longer want to work with us or all sorts of things just kind of come up. We, we manifest those and then it's sometimes uh, difficult to see how that connects. So can you speak to that? Yes. Um, again, that can come down to being uncomfortable with having excess money. Mm-hmm. It could be um, believing that bad things happen to you when you earn a certain amount of money. It could be feelings of unworthiness um, and undeservedness, mm-hmm. if that's a word. Um, and, you know, it, it happened to me about a year and a half ago. I, I bought a, a new car and it's the first time I'd ever bought a new car. And, you know, I'd I'm I'm like two cars before that or three cars before that were secondhand and basically the company's liability ends as soon as you drive off the lot, right? So they kind of (laughs) give you the key and then you kind of drive away and the car starts falling apart as soon as you drive away. (laughs) And then I bought this brand new car and, you know, it's a process. They take you through this sales process and then when you buy it, they take you through the car and they give you all these presents and all this kind of stuff. And (laughs) not only that, um, I'd bought uh, lucky B number plates. Yeah. And, and so when I went to pick up the car, they had put it in the showroom under lights and they'd picked up the number plates and, and, you know, they take a picture and then every single person in the car yard gives you, um, like, an, you know, you go see the paint person, you go see, you go see like six people oh, wow. and each person goes, congratulations <laughs> on your new car. <laughs> wow. And I, and I was just getting more and more triggered as the day went on. <laughs> I was just going, I don't deserve this new car. Like who am I to have a brand new car? This is such a waste of money. You know, this is, yeah. this depreciates, you know, all this stuff. I was just telling myself, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. And they gave me the keys and <laughs> I, I walked to my car and I did the biggest comedic fall in the history of the world. <laughs> I slipped, I hit the fence, I hit my car, I hit the ground, I knocked over um, one of the sales guys <laughs> and then I bounced back up and um, I was like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm fine. And they were just like, 
holy crap, are you okay? <laughs> and I got in the car and they were just like waiting to wave me goodbye. And I sat there for just an extra second and I just did a little tapping on my hand and I said, it's safe for me to have new and beautiful things. Mm-hmm. Because I knew, I mean, I was thinking, I'm going to drive off and, like, some car is going to crash into me and these guys are just going to sit there, like, just be standing there going, what? <laughs> and it, I just knew it was just my blocks and my triggers from something new new happening. And sometimes just, again, acknowledging it and going, oh, okay, I see what I'm doing here. I am, you know, I'm sabotaging this. And that can sometimes dissipate it in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, I love saying these mantras of it's safe to, so it could be, it's, it's safe for me to have more clients. It's safe for me to make more money. It's safe for me to be more visible. It's safe for me to have a bigger business Mm -hmm. and each level, each time you do something new and scary in your business, each thing is a rite of passage. Like it's, you know, the first time you have someone who sends you hate mail or the first <laughs> refund request, yeah. none of those things mean anything. It's the business of being in business. Yeah. And you will be able to take each one of those um, little tests, I guess, and be like, okay, cool. That's just a test. Doesn't mean anything about me. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Next one, next one, next one. Um, and it's incredibly powerful, I think, to have a mastermind of women that you can talk to these things about. So it's really incredibly powerful to say it out loud and admit what's happening to yourself first and then go, hey, guys, this is what's just come up for me. How, you know, I just, I almost just crashed my brand new car because I didn't believe I deserved it. Ha, ha, ha. Let's not do that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Masterminds are amazing. Yeah. When yes. you have those, um, those few people that you really connect with and, and yeah, it's like they they can be, they can help you walk through those, those, like those doorways, those levels. So mm. yeah, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So what's something you do in your daily uh, spiritual practice that has really changed your life? I think it is those mantras of, um, it's safe for me. Mm-hmm. It's safe for me to do X, Y, Z. And the other mantra is I serve, I deserve. Mm. And these two um, things, have, they have really have changed my life because I think it's really easy sometimes um, for women who are doing the kind of transformational work that we are to be quite spongy to other people's stuff. stuff yeah. and, um, and also we want to give. We want to help people so much. We want to transform people's lives. And I Serve, I Deserve is one of those things where you, it helps you when you have the urge to over-deliver mm-hmm. um, but not receive in return. Sure. Yeah, it's very powerful. Yeah, cool. So one last uh, question for you. Um, I always like to ask whoever I'm talking to for a practical tip that we can all start using right away. And so I'm curious, do you have a practical tip that we can start allowing more money into our life? Absolutely. It's so simple. Um, (laughs) Is to track your money. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, and Kendall Summerhawk, she taught me this as well. She's a great money mentor. But she just said, you know, a simple piece of paper and a pen and you can just write the days of the month down. I mean, in, in my boot camp we have, you know, slightly more fancier things. But mm-hmm. it's like you just literally just write, track your income because it keeps your eye on um, income as also an indicator of your business you know of course it's how many clients you serve and help and all that kind of stuff but it's it really really keep you accountable to your income and it will give you gratitude for the flow that you already have yeah yeah and I think like you said earlier that is so so important to um say yes please I'd like to have more of this Mm -hmm. yeah excellent exactly Well, I know that you have tons of fantastic goodies on your website and I'm wondering where should people go to get, to find you and get your free stuff? Sure. So I'm at luckybitch.com and, um, one of the best freebies that I I have is seven money blocks and that can be just found at luckybitch.com slash blocks. And I talk about seven specific blocks that female entrepreneurs have and what you can do about it as well. So that's one of my favorite freebies. And I would love to hear people's um, experiences with that. Yeah. Yeah, that is a great one. 
Yeah. So, well, thank you, Denise, for uh, taking this time with us today. And thanks, everyone, for listening to the Awakened Goddess show. If you had as much fun as we did, make sure to subscribe on iTunes and give us a five-star rating and review. And until next time, goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Awakened Goddess. I hope you enjoyed today's show and took away something you can start using in your life right away. For more spiritual insights and to listen to more episodes, subscribe to The Awakened Goddess Show at thegoddessnextdoor.com and discover wisdom that'll change your life.